Toyota's BZ4X, its first ever fully battery electric vehicle on their new ETNG platform, it's going to be reliable. It's going to offer new technologies we've never seen before on a Toyota. It's also going to be very slow. Over the Toyota Global Newsroom, this is all translated from Japanese. This is the biggest source of information for the BZ4X. We'll go into a lot of this information in a little bit, but I want to go back in time. We're going to go back all the way to September 7th, 2021, where Toyota kind of gave us a glimpse of what they're working on. Batteries, platforms, their hybrids, their battery electric vehicles like the BZ4X, as well as plug-in hybrids. And this kind of this statement that you see highlighted kind of set the stage for what Toyota plans on doing. Uh, so that for their hybrid vehicles, their focus is on power output, or in other words, instantaneous power. While when it comes to plug-in hybrids and battery electric vehicles, their focus is on capacity or what can be called endurance slash range. So at least for the near future, you can't really expect Toyota or maybe even Lexus to make high performing battery electric vehicles. They absolutely could if they wanted to, but I think they would rather showcase their hybrid electric vehicles with higher amounts of performance than to uh, give their battery electric vehicles that spotlight. Don't know why they decided to do it that way, but this is Toyota we're talking about, and they're offering new technology here on the battery electric end of things. And that probably means they want to focus on uh, reliability and endurance, number one, with this new technology, and then over time add performance to it. But it can't help but feel extremely disappointing uh, if you've been hoping that the new BZ4X would have just a tiny bit of exciting performance. And no, I haven't driven it yet. No one has driven it yet in the media press. It's only in prototype form. If we scroll down to the bottom, this vehicle, if you want it in front wheel drive, it's 150 kilowatts, which is not bad. I guess it's around 200 horsepower. That's roughly what the RAV4 has with its inline four cylinder. If you want the all wheel drive, you get two 80 kilowatt motors, one on the front, one in the back and it's only 214 horsepower. And that to me is uh, a bit disappointing. What do you guys think? Were you hoping to have closer to 250 to 300 horsepower on the new BZ4X? I don't think that's asking too much. You can get a Camry with over 300 horsepower with the V6. You can get a RAV4 Prime with 302 horsepower. And you're giving this vehicle less electrification power than the, the RAV4 Prime, it's it's a head scratcher to me, and I guess Toyota knows what they're doing here, but uh, it definitely leaves me wanting with the BZ4X in terms of acceleration and power. By the way, they give us acceleration numbers here. Zero to 100 kilometers per hour on the front wheel drive is 8.4 seconds, which is roughly, if you convert it to zero to 60, is about eight seconds. And then if you convert the 100 kilometers per hour, zero to 100 uh, to zero to 60 with the all wheel drive model, we're looking at the mid to low sevens. If we go to Motor Trend, they're able to rattle off the RAV4 hybrid, not the Prime, the standard hybrid with 219 horsepower in 7.1 seconds. So they are essentially making the RAV4 hybrid fully electric with the exact same performance or slightly slower, but in full electric variant. So, but it's probably time for me to talk about the other features on the, on the car. Uh, the slow performance I could talk about for a long time and how underwhelming it is. But one of the things they keep reiterating is they want good Reliability, first and foremost, so that means 90% of the battery's capacity will be remaining in 10 years, and that's probably worst case scenario, mind you, of them just beating the hell out of the battery. So for the average person, it's gonna be far more than 90% in 10 years. And they also want to maintain cruising range in winter. They've adapted new heating strategies for the battery to do that, as well as heat the interior in unique ways in order to maintain the battery charge and therefore the range as well. There's a ton amount of rear leg room. Well, I've sat in the back of the BZ4X when I was in uh, Plano for HQ Confidential and there was a good amount of leg room. They're saying that's about a D segment sedan. And just looking here, it looks similar to what is in the back of the Avalon or the Lexus ES, which 
ironically has more leg space than the Lexus LS. There's the panoramic roof, which you can see in this picture as well, which I've already showed you uh, on my walk around of the BZ4X. But there's also a cool new feature that we didn't know was coming to it. And that is the solar panel, which can generate 1800 kilometers per year in additional range. So I don't know, would you guys be giving up the panel roof to get a solar roof? Even here in Florida, where I can maximize the charging capabilities of the BZ4X's solar roof, I just don't see, like I would be parking it in the garage, right? It's a, it's a brand new, nice car, probably be parking it in the garage most of the time. And I'm not out and about that much in order to use the solar roof. So it's definitely cool. I wouldn't really call it a gimmick because 1800 kilometers, let's say that's around a thousand miles of range of free range is pretty cool, but I would rather have the panel roof to let more light into the vehicle. So in order to improve uh, that heating in winter, as well as keeping the range high, they're using a heat pump for the air conditioner, and they're using this unique seat heater and steering wheel heater with a radiant heater at the feet of the front seats, which Toyota's never done before. In terms of charging capacity, we have up to 80% in 30 minutes, which is 150 kilowatts for the DC quick charging. It's not gonna be as fast as let's say the Ionic 5 or the Kia EV6 or even the Genesis GV80, or sorry, the GV60. Uh, but Toyota wants to ensure longevity of the battery, health of the battery, and I still think it's pretty darn fast. 80% in 30 minutes is not bad at all. And I haven't talked about range on this vehicle, which is actually pretty decent, but we need to talk about how it translates or could translate to EPA. So they're saying the one charge range for the front wheel drive model is around 500 kilometers. And the four wheel drive or the all wheel drive model is 460 kilometers. When you translate that to miles and then EPA, it's not as high as a lot of other options out there. So if I go over to the spreadsheet where I have a lot of other potential competitors up here, the Ionic, the, the Kia EV6, Tesla Model Y, ID4, Mach-E, the Aria, and then the BZ4X. When you convert those kilometers to miles in the EPA, we're down to 272 miles with a 71.4 kilowatt hour battery. That's the only battery we know of at this point in time. And then the all wheel drive model is around 250 miles. Knowing Toyota, these are probably very conservative estimates for the range. But if we look at its nearest closest rival, which is gonna be the Nissan Aria, it's going to have a lot more power and a lot more acceleration compared to the BZ4X. Up to 389 horsepower on the all-wheel drive Aria compared to the 214 on the BZ4X. And with its such low power and acceleration numbers, Toyota only can do one thing, in my opinion, to sway people to the BZ4X over its competitors, and that is to price it very, very competitively. Toyota knows how to make money better than just about anyone on their vehicles. They just posted that their sales are way lower than they were expecting this year due to the supply shortage, but their profits are up like 40%. Meanwhile, uh, Honda and Subaru are just bleeding money. Meanwhile, Toyota's is just lining their pockets with money. They just know how to make money and make tons of it and to reduce their costs while even selling less vehicles. It's just incredible. Anyways, the BZ4X needs to have really affordable competitive pricing in order to sway people to buy this vehicle. Now, some people might just be like, hey, I don't need 300 horsepower in zero to 60 in five seconds in my electric vehicle. 200 horsepower is enough, which if you look at the market, 200 horsepower is roughly what the best selling vehicle that's not a pickup truck in America already has, and that's the RAV4. So maybe Toyota knows what they're doing here, giving us a really modest and meager amount of power on their fully electric BZ4X. And it makes me wonder, what is the Lexus LFZ electrified concept when that comes out more than like the RZ 450E, which is trademark? What is that going to have? Is it going to have a, a low ball amount of power, like 214 horsepower? Well, I think it'll have slightly more. If we go to my old spreadsheet, it's a little outdated, but I think this is pretty realistic. They keep the same front motor as the front wheel drive BZ4X on the RZ 450E, and then they just put the rear motor on the all-wheel drive model, BZ4X on it, and they get it gets us uh, 308 horsepower. 
I think that makes a whole lot of sense. And they absolutely need to have more power on the Lexus model versus the BZ4X. So maybe Toyota is just kind of saving its Lexus lineup and not wanting to give too much power to its Toyota electric vehicles to prevent the cannibalization of its Lexus fully electric vehicles. That's a possibility, but I still just can't figure out why such a modest amount of power on the BZ4X. And to finish things up, Toyota further explains how they've kind of purified their battery packs in order to reduce hot spots and shorting out of the batteries, which causes fires. So it's probably going to be the most reliable electric vehicle ever produced, which doesn't really come as a surprise, but it's also going to be one of the slowest. I'll keep bringing that up. Uh, DC external power supply function. So it does have vehicle to load as well. That's great to see. And I guess that's where potentially the solar roof could come in handy as if, you know, you are in a blackout or in a hurricane situation and you can run your vehicle off of solar to give your house power. I guess that's a possibility. And lastly, people like talking about this yoke. It is going to be available only in China first and then available in other parts of the world after that. Who knows if we'll ever get it here in the United States. This vehicle will be available in mid-2022 across the world and that includes the United States here. But expect availability to be next to nothing in most states. And even if you have this vehicle available in your state by mid-2022, it's probably going to be extremely expensive due to dealer markups and things of that nature, even if you're getting the $7,500 tax credit and additional state tax credits on top of that, it's still going to be expensive. Even if Toyota's MSRP is, let's say, 35 to 40K on this vehicle, which I'm fingers crossed, I'm hoping it is because it's so meagerly powered compared to its competition. But until I drive the BZ4X, I'm going to be a little disappointed with it. It is straight up Toyota though. I shouldn't have got my expectations as high as I did. I thought 300 horsepower wasn't asking too much because look, the Camry, the Avalon, uh, the Highlander, so many vehicles in Toyota's lineup essentially have a 300 horsepower V6 in there. I didn't think it would be too much to ask for Toyota to easily have that much power in their first ever fully electric vehicle, but instead they've decided to go the endurance route with very little motors, very small motors, very small amounts of power and acceleration. And yeah, they're they're probably onto something here. If they can keep the motor small and reduce the cost somehow, maybe they can bring this vehicle to us for a world beating price. But not getting my hopes up. They can't even supply the RAV4 Prime, let alone who knows what's going to happen to the NX450H Plus around the world and the availability of that car. I'm just getting pretty skeptical. And if you guys couldn't tell, I'm just a little disappointed in this video. And that's, that's okay. I can't always be glowing about Toyota. If I was, I wouldn't be a reputable source of information or an honest journalist. I just feel like Toyota could have easily given us the reliability they're talking about as well as giving us an additional 50 to 100 horsepower. It's not asking much, especially with electrification. It's very easy to add that to vehicles compared to internal combustion engine cars. But anyways, guys, I'm going to there. If you want a high performance Toyota, you're probably going to have to get a hybrid in the near future. They're not going to give it to you in the BZ series for a while anyways. Anyways, guys, <laughs> signing out. I'll catch you in the next video. Cannot wait to see what you guys have to think about the BZ4X down below. And I need to stop rambling at this point. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.